good morning students today we'll be uh, discussing about the second half of our analog butterworth filter approximation the continuation of our uh, previous class right so in our pre previous class we saw about the frequency response characteristics of low pass butterworth filter determination of poles and then the butterworth polynomials we are left behind with the entire design procedure of the low pass butterworth filter based on the previous discussions so th this class we will discuss about the entire low pass butterworth filter design so the internal steps that are needed to design a low pass butterworth filter is step number 1 uh, from your design specifications first you have to determine the order of the filter step number 2 is you have to determine the cutoff frequency right so step number 3 is you have to determine the normalized transfer function h of s normalized transfer function is 1 where the cutoff frequency omega c is 1 radians per second step number 4 is you have to find the unnormalized transfer function h a of s from h of s by substituting s tends to s by omega c so step number 1 to step number 4 is a design procedure for a low pass filter step number 5 is an occasional step which will be needed if you are asked to design a high pass filter or band pass filter or a band stop filter if any of these filters are asked such as high pass band pass or band stop you first need to design a low pass filter starting from number 1 to 4 follow the steps 1 to 4 design a low pass filter and what you have to do is in step number 5 you have to apply a suitable transformation formula and hence find a high pass filter or band pass filter or band stop as per the specifications so the first one is a determination of the order of the filter so we know very well that uh, the magnitude response of your uh, butterworth filter is given by h of j omega equal to it is described by this equation so uh, we are going to perform certain mathematical cal calculations to derive at the value of n so we are performing squaring of this on both sides so when you when you square on both sides the square root will get removed here so on removing it uh, you are taking log on both sides so 10 log and it is equal to 10 log and the next step you can take 2 towards the other side so it will be 20 log of h of j omega uh, 10 into log of numerator by denominator is 10 log of 1 so because in the previous case the numerator was 1 so it will be 10 log of 1 minus 10 log of the denominator so log 1 is 0 so you will be getting over here right so now what we are going to do is here you have this factor called as omega right so what we are going to do is we know from the frequency response curve that when omega value is equal to omega p right the corresponding magnitude function is nothing but your attenuation or gain factor alpha p right so here on left hand side what you got have 20 log of h of j omega so what fact we are going to deploy here is at omega equal to omega p the ma the 20 log of h of j omega is equal to alpha p right so we are going to substitute that so 20 log of h of j omega is equal to uh, this is uh, is equal to minus alpha p at at which at which it is equal to minus alpha p where at omega is equal to omega p why does this negative sign come because it is attenuation from 0 it is dropping down so that is why we are taking it as negative so minus alpha p is equal to minus 10 log of 1 plus epsilon squared in the place of omega we are replacing it by omega p so omega p to the power of 2 n so this will become 1 so epsilon squared epsilon squared and then 0 0.1 alpha p is equal to log of 1 plus epsilon squared uh, so 10 to the power of uh, 0 0.1 alpha p is equal to anti log you take the anti log you will be getting 1 plus epsilon squared which is equivalent to epsilon squared equal to 10 to the power 10 to the power of 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1 so from here we can reduce that epsilon value is equal to square root of 10 to the power of 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1 similarly you can find out so you know that epsilon is called as uh, ripple in the passband 
lambda if you follow a similar procedure you can find out the value of uh, lambda here lambda is called as a ripple in the stop band so these two expressions we are getting for epsilon and lambda please note down the formulas for epsilon and lambda because uh, these will be very useful when you are solving the problem and one more point here is a 1 to the power of 2n is 1 that is why we have put here just epsilon square right so now having found out uh, epsilon and lambda we proceed with the steps because our ultimate aim is we have to find n right so what we are doing is uh, the earlier step was we have substituted at omega equal to omega p which is the passband frequency now you have to go for omega equal to omega s that is at the stop band frequency omega s what is the gain or attenuation it is equal to alpha s so here in the place of omega you have to substitute omega s right and on the left hand side you will be substituting it as alpha s right so we can tell that at omega equal to omega s minimum stop band attenuation is equal to alpha s right so minus since it's attenuation we are again telling taking it as minus alpha s so minus alpha s is equal to minus 10 log of so and so so 10 to the power of 0 0.1 alpha s is equal to 1 plus epsilon squared remember we are substituting here omega s so omega s by omega p to the power of 2n right so mathematical expressions simplification so this one take one to the other side so omega s by omega p to the power of 2n is equal to 10 to the power of 0 point alpha s minus 1 divided by epsilon squared in a previous step only we have derived the expression for epsilon square right 10 to the power of alpha p minus 1 so this epsilon squared we can substitute over here right and hence we will be getting omega s by n we have here uh, 2 so taking square root of both sides so you will be getting this uh, and then next you can go for n take log on both sides so log and then n n log is equal to log so n is equal to log of this one divided by log of omega s by omega p right so this formula is a very very important formula that is used to find the order of the filter similarly see the very important point is uh, this formula should be used when in your given specification alpha s and alpha p are given that is your gain or attenuation is given in terms of decibels right we know that alpha s and alpha p are attenuation in terms of decibels so in your specification if the attenuation is given in terms of decibels you have to choose this formula for n right in case what is the other formula we can write log of we can in we can replace square root of this by means of lambda and square root of this by epsilon what is lambda and epsilon these are just simple numerical values which specify pass band ripple and stop band ripple so in your problem if they have given the attenuation in not in db and if they have given just as a number you have to choose a formula for order of the filter in this one so this you have to note down right so our uh, uh, whatever you usually you don't get the value of n exactly as an integer you will be getting as a real number so what you have to do is you have to round off n to the next highest integer that is why you have in that manner only you can find out the order of the filter so next step is determination of cutoff frequency so the magnitude square function of butterworth analog filter again same thing we are starting with the frequency response uh, uh, equation and uh, from that frequency response uh, equation uh, the other form of representing in terms of epsilon there are two ways of representing so comparing we know very well that these are the two ways of representing your butterworth analog filter so when you compare these two equations what you infer is omega c to the power of 2n is equal to omega p squared to the power of 2n divided by epsilon squared i think this is very much evident when you try to compare these two equations just compare these two terms everything else is same except for these two terms so here it is square root and here also it is square root uh, here alone you try to compare when you see this equation will hold right so from here omega c it holds on very simple omega c is equal to omega p divided by epsilon to the power of 1 by n right so omega this is again here there are two formulas to calculate one is 
if epsilon is given then you have to go for this formula for finding the cutoff frequency if uh, attenuation is given you have to go for this formula for finding the cutoff frequency so please make a note of these formulas for determining the cutoff frequency then step number 3 is to determine the normalized transfer function so if in step number 2 if your value of omega c is equal to 1 rate uh, omega c it is not necessary you will be getting 1 radians per second you may be getting anything apart from uh, uh, 1 radians per second so what you have to do now is you have to first find the transfer function for omega c equal to 1 radians per second how will you find this you will find this by knowing the order of the filter in previous class we have seen right if n is equal to choose at n is equal to 2 you have to choose the particular butterworth polynomial that we have seen in the previous class if n equal to 3 a table is given a table was given from the table you have to choose the butterworth formula polynomial so based on the order of the filter determine the transfer function h of s as discussed under our polynomial table for reference you please go and refer that right then step number 4 now you have to determine unnormalized transfer function for this particular problem right so here we would have got some value of omega c so from the transfer function that we have got here in that transfer function wherever you have s you replace by s by omega c when you do that you will be getting your unnormalized transfer function specific to this particular problem that you have taken under consideration right so step number uh, this is actually step number step number 5 so step number 5 is analog to analog frequency transformation if only a low pass filter design is given this step need not be followed only if HPF or LPF have to be given uh, are given or have to be designed we have to follow this anyhow uh, how to design a high pass filter or band pass or band stop will be dealt again separately but just I have illustrated here the formulas needed for analog to analog frequency transformation if you want to convert from a low pass filter to high pass filter then you have to use a formula s tends to omega p divided by s into omega c right wherever you have s you should replace like this then if you want to convert lpf into band pass filter you should replace s by s squared plus omega u omega l divided by s into omega u minus omega l where omega u and omega l are the upper cutoff frequency and lower cutoff frequency of the band pass filter similarly while converting into band stop filter yes should be you have to use this formula for performing conversions so problems under this will be discussed separately right so now uh, let us go into our uh, problem so design an analog butterworth filter that has a minus 2 db passband attenuation right at a frequency of 20 radians per second and at least minus 10 db stop band attenuation at 30 radians per second please stay put a pause on the video and try to understand uh, what are the given specifications right okay so from the specific from the given problem i can identify that the attenuation 2 db passband attenuation that is nothing but the gain right passband gain at a frequency of 20 radians per second so what is this uh, passband and this will be the passband frequency so here omega p value will be equal to what your omega p value will be equal to 20 radians per second right it will be 20 radians per second and again they have given here minus 10 db stop band attenuation so stop band attenuation means the attenuation gain alpha s right so alpha s, so here omega p equal to 20 db what is the gain minus 2 db so this will be actually minus 2 db note please note down that everything is given in decibels right and here uh, stop band here it is given omega s what is attenuation it is minus 10 db right it is minus 10 db so you can note down here you can see that right the maximum is actually 0 db as it falls minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 minus 10 it falls off so hence it is minus 10 db so you can write your uh, equations alpha p is uh, 2 db alpha s is 10 db omega p is 20 radians per second and omega s is 30 radians per second so now first step is to determine the order of the filter 
So what formula will you choose for the order of the filter? I told you already if uh, attenuation in dB is given choose the formula appropriately. So we are choosing the formula which contains alpha s and alpha p right. So in this formula it is very simple here after you have to just substitute the values. You substitute for alpha s and alpha p and uh, then you simplify you will be getting the value as 3.37 right. So since it is 3.37 you have to round it off to the nearest integer and hence you are getting n is equal to 4. Is it clear? Fine. So now you, this is the first step. What is the second step? Second step is you have to calculate the cutoff frequency, right? Again here choosing the formula for cutoff frequency, it is given in decibels. So I am choosing the appropriate formula omega c equal to omega p by 10 to the power of 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1 to the power of 1 by 2 n. So substituting the values and using your calculator you can find out the value as 21.38. So this is the cutoff frequency 21.38 radians per second right. What is step number 3? You have to determine the transfer function h of s for omega c equal to 1 radians per second that is called as the normalized transfer function right. So you have to uh, make a note of this point that it is called as normalized transfer function. So it is called as normalized transfer function right. So here how will you choose? So go to your Butterworth polynomial uh, table for n equal to 4 you are getting an expression for h of s like this right. So this is the uh, normalized transfer function right. So here you can substitute see uh, you need not again go and uh, uh, find out the poles and from the poles you need not find out the uh, transfer function. You can just memorize at least for four order filters and depending on the order of the filter you can choose your transfer function. Step number four, you have to find the unnormalized transfer function H A of S for the above value by substituting S tends to S by omega C in H of S. So what was our omega C? 21.38. So in this h of s wherever you have s you have to replace it by s by omega c. So you replace it by s by omega c you will be getting an expression like this just to simplify this expression you will be getting an expression for h of s. This is the transfer function of your Butterworth analog Butterworth filter is it clear. So we can go again for one more problem right. So this problem is given. Uh, in variation with the previous one. What is the variation here? You can put a pause and look into it. The variation given over here is the values given are not in decibels, right? So what it is given here? The magnitude of the response is equal to 0 0.9 and here it the value is equal, it is between uh, 0 0.9 and 1. Here it is between, it is lesser than 0 0.2, right? and uh, the frequencies is between 0 to 0 0.2 pi and this is 0 0.4 pi to pi right. So here you can see that what will be the frequency response here I have taken the frequency response which is pertaining not in decibels right. So now you can uh, write very well over here. So how will you write here at see here between 0 0.9 and 1 so this is 1 and obviously this point is nothing but 0.9 right. So this values is for the frequencies between 0 and 0 0.2 pi. So 0 0.2 pi is your pass band frequency right. So omega p value is nothing but what 0 0.2 pi. Then what they have given h of j omega is lesser than or equal to 0 0.2 when, when omega value is greater than 0 0.5 and lesser than pi. So here so this stop band frequency is 0 0.4 pi right 0 0.4 pi right till pi this is the maximum thing which which you can go right only uh, the left half of the s plane you can go for 180 degrees so you can go up to maximum of pi over here right so here 0 0.5 to pi what is the magnitude here 0 0.2. So this gain is 0 0.2 okay. 
So here no value is the gain is not given in decibels that is a very important takeaway. So now we can find the order of the filter So write the form omega p we are just writing omega p is 0.2 pi omega s is 0.5 we are choosing the order of filter based on lambda and epsilon substituting in the formulas 1 by square root just simplify a very simple simplification will give epsilon as 0.234 and similarly again one day. see we know this formula right how do we write this formula see how do we write this formula uh, this you get over here 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon squared is nothing but what 0 0.9 right so we are writing this simplifying this and from this you are getting the ripple in your pass band which is epsilon similarly here 1 by 1 plus lambda squared is equal to 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 1 by 1 plus simplify your uh, stop band ripple will be lambda equal to 4.898. So now you can substitute this epsilon and lambda omega s and omega p in these equations and you will be getting your order of the filter. So you are again getting the order of the filter as n equal to 4. Then step 2 calculate the cutoff frequency omega c. So I am choosing this formula for cutoff frequency which contains epsilon right. So epsilon and then simplify you are getting omega c equal to 0 0.25 pi radians per second. Step number 3 as usual find the transfer function omega c for that is a, a normalized transfer function for 1 radians per second and here for n equal to 4 the Butterworth polynomial see there we had uh, one point I would like to stress is the Butterworth polynomial is the denominator polynomial right in the numerator you have to put it as 1. So, 1 divided by the polynomial over there, right. Then next, find the transfer function for the above value by substituting S tends to S by omega C. So, just substitute and finally, you will be getting the transfer function, right. So, the practice problem for this session will be, you have to design an analog Butterworth filter uh, for the given specifications. See, from the specification, you try to draw the graph and from the graph itself you try to f find out what is given whether it is a low pass or high pass from the given specification you have to find out and complete the design thank you